Look how the stars turn on. Look how the stars turn on. Hello and welcome to Season 4, Episode 10 of the Press Box, in association with the unit. Well, we have a new manager, but of all names that were linked to the vacancy at Oreo Park, it's doubtful that many would have predicted that uh, Noel King would be Stephen O'Donnell's successor. So news of the 67-year-old's impending appointment broke on Friday night after Dundalk had come from behind, courtesy of Jamie Gullen's penalty to earn a one-all draw against Sligo at the showgrounds. So tonight we're going to discuss King's appointment as well as look back at that game in Sligo and ahead to the big game against Bowes at Oreo Park on Friday. So, Jimmy, a bit of a, a whirlwind weekend. Um, I don't even know where to start, but uh, Noel King is now our new manager. Uh, I know you've actually been up chatting to him and stuff and there's, you know, so many different discussion topic points and everything that we can go through. But I suppose, what do you make of the whole thing in general then? Yeah. Um, whirlwind is probably the word for it. Um, uh, if you had offered me odds of, uh, I was reminiscent to a couple of people the other day, you know, back in uh, when I started out in sort of journalism and, and, and in local papers, you used to ring Barry O'Brien down in Key Sports and, and uh, you'd say to him, give us odds on the next Dundalk manager there. And he'd, he'd drum up a few odds for you. And you'd obviously give him a, a bit of a steer in terms of names linked with it or whatever. But I think if you had offered me 500 to 1 on Friday, uh, pulling into the showgrounds that Noel King was going to be Dundalk's next manager, I don't think I would have put a euro of your money on it, let alone my own. Um and it, yeah, it just kind of came out of the blue then when I was actually just leaving the showgrounds and, and, and Tom O'Connor uh, actually texted me and said, Noel King. And, and I, like, Tom doesn't drink or anything, but I, I, I kind of was questioning whether he was on it or something. And uh, very quickly then it emerged, obviously, the John Fallon, to be fair to him, had the story and the examiner made a few inquiries um, to see was it true. And very quickly it emerged that it was. and. Um, yeah, it was a, a surreal uh, journey home from Sligo then because uh, basically the phone never stopped uh, and uh, a couple of those back roads through, I was sending someone a voice note at one stage, they said, I don't even know what county I'm in. I think, I think it was in Fermanagh, um, but uh, it was just a sort of, the journey flew actually in the end because of, because of all that, but it was... Uh, probably like nothing I've ever experienced. And then obviously it wasn't checking social, obviously because driving, but uh, it was all kicking off. But you were obviously giving me a flavor of it. And, and needless to say, I don't think you were too impressed. Yeah, it, it's funny. It, it, it's great that we're doing the podcast Tuesday because you have time, to, a bit of time to reflect and there's a lot less anger and stuff. And then, and as you do reflect on it, I think the first thing that I think all fans have to kind of, talk about like no thing you're you're dead right is a wayward appointment in theory had no merit of the job in that sense but from no king's point of view i just want to get this in first before i move on to the actual anger about things if they offered me the job or you the job or anybody else we would have taken it doesn't mean we're the right man for it so on a personal level with no king fair play to him and hopefully keeps us up and maybe we can get behind him but i think the few days after, um, there's so many topics. Uh, it 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 seems uh, you know even from your piece that the owner kind of went after bigger names, including a Stephen Kenny, um, Barraclough. Even we tried to get Keith Long on the Thursday night, I think Friday morning. Um, you were saying about the. Helsinki manager they were, they were in touch Gary Cronin so all in some way reputable and on the scene managers Um, obviously Peter Halpin had put out an article on Wednesday Thursday again ballpark 
about yeah we're still we want to keep our fans updated um we you know and anyway long story short the application's out till most people will be listening to this Wednesday so let's say Wednesday the the 24th and then all of a sudden out of nowhere no king comes and the man who writes the checks is well within his right to hire whoever he wants however the look it gives now for the club for for Brian Gartland for Peter Halpin that again I can only assume he went over their heads as Noel said he did not apply for the job so he was just picked out of the sky um I don't understand if you're if your ambitions to get a Stephen Kenny and offer such a lucrative deal um or even an Ian Barclough which it was a recent Northern Irish manager uh, did so well in the League of Ireland as well was happy to maybe discuss things this coming Saturday when the league finishes why not wait if you want to get the right man Keith Long again we went in from I don't know how that would work if it, there obviously could be some compensation they rejected the discussion I assume but you know if you really want Keith Long you can go back in and say I know you rejected but how about this as an offer and, and that's how things are negotiated but I think it just was a potentially terrible appointment that seemed to just be like a vain appointment that I'm in charge and I get that because he is actually in charge but why are you why are you putting out these applications for people to get involved why are you reaching out to other people if you're just have your mate essentially because as I said merits of the job no disrespect to Noel King you you, you said it he wouldn't be a 501 and for that reason is because he was managing Shelburne ladies last year and left because it was too time consuming or, uh, you know, it, it was too much from at this stage. He's 67 years old and that's fair enough. So where does that come into people, the, the, the owners thinking of this is the right man to get us out of a dog fight? You know, he's also on an 18 month deal. So it's not even a, oh, here's six months. Just try save us. If you can, you can, you can't, you can't. But it's a, an 18 month deal. And, and I just think, it makes us as a club look an absolute mess. I think it, it undermined his two employees in Brian Gartland and Peter Halpin, in my opinion, who are talking to some people and trying to get deals done. I'm sure Brian Ainscoff was as well, but it just the the look of it, it just screamed panic to me. And only time will tell if that panic was the right move. Because again, this is nothing personal to Noel King because as I said, anybody who gets offered it would take it. But if we do not improve and results keep going the same way, because he doesn't know half the players, I was listening to his interview today uh, with Tony O'Donoghue, and, um, you know, he, he admitted in fairness, he's like, haven't seen any of the games. He didn't want to discuss them things because, as I said, he hadn't been keeping an eye on the because he hadn't a, an idea that he'd be getting back in the league. So he didn't, and he doesn't know half of our players. So to build that relationship, to put things in place so quickly in such a pinnacle moment, I just don't get it. And and that's like, I have definitely a lot less anger because I think I was fuming on Friday because I just thought, well, we're going straight down. Maybe we won't now, maybe something, but I just, it doesn't make sense to me. There's so many points, as I said, I mentioned, and, and the merits, if you broke it down just to the general merits of the man over the last, he hasn't managed in the League of Ireland the last 25 years, why is he getting the job? Why is he getting the job? Do you know what I mean? Why are we giving this man the job if you're just based on merits? Bar, he was my manager at Home Farm 25 years ago. More, Probably more, you know, and like you just think, come on, lads. And it was disappointing on Friday night because the the names that were being banded about and in, in your article and other people's articles that the club <laughs> were speaking to, some of them I would have been delighted with. Again, the Kenny was probably a long shot, even Barraclough slightly longer, but I think would have been very possible. If you want long, you can make that happen. Negotiations go back and forth, but I just think to pull that out of his arse pocket yeah, and not have other people in the club know about it and have people in the club negatively informing him of that to potentially change his mind as well. Like, I don't know, is that is there animosity within the camp now as well and at a higher level? I don't know. Now, and ultimately, 
he writes the check so he can do what he wants but I just thought as a as a move for the club it didn't seem all in sync and I, I don't know where that'll bring us but listen good luck to know and for what it's worth maybe he will do a good job but I thought the process was an absolute joke yeah, well, just to touch on some of the points you made there, like you're right, you can't blame Noel for taking us. Um, like we all think we know a little bit about football, um, and he definitely does because look, he it it has been his life from I think he made his home farm debut at sixteen, and he's pretty much been involved in the game ever since. Uh, I know you reference him leaving Shell's ladies, but he uh, since January he's actually been working for Home Farm overseeing their their ladies side and he's the director of football for um the ladies side of Home Farm as well. So it, listen, it, it's a it's a big leap up to League of Ireland, don't get me wrong, yeah. but but he's he's been in he's been in football is what I'm saying. It's been mm-hmm. his life, no matter what you say. It's not like this man was you know, a mechanic or something, and just doing this on the, on the side, or you know, it, it 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 has been his life, and when you're given an opportunity, you know, that's exciting, and like in many ways, and look, we let's not be hypocrites about it. We would have said, like, regardless of who gets the job, there's an element of it's sort of win win because, you know, say Stephen Kenny had a took the job, for example. If Stephen Kenny hadn't kept us up, well, everyone would just said, "Well, we were sort of screwed anyway." You know that the you know things were looking bleak before he came in, and maybe no one could have arrested that situation. Um, but equally, if you keep us up, you're a great fella. Now, look, that still applies to Noel. But if you do go down, and that's obviously the worst case scenario, you're asking that question of like, right, I want to crack at bringing them back up again. So you're giving yourself probably that comfort blanket of an 18 month deal that very few people in football actually get so it it's 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 attractive um but yeah there's nothing like listen I, I met Noel on 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 Monday he he didn't try and uh hide that you know he didn't apply it sort of came out of the blue even for him uh it happened very very quickly and again you can't blame him for taking an offer that's Look, there's financial elements to this as well, which I, I don't know what he's on. I don't care to ask what he's on or what anything like that. But, you know, when you're offered a, a job that, you know, is good for the, the bank account as well as anything else, as well as keeping you stimulated, you know, there's multiple reasons from his perspective why he'd take it. What I suppose to, I don't want to use the word outrage, but there was a bit of that on Friday. It It, it was kind of, you know, two hands doing different things. So Brian Ainscoff has been in America and still is in America to the best of my knowledge for the last few weeks. And obviously the club had quite publicly, as you mentioned, gone out last week and, and put out a statement in relation to the process. They'd set a deadline on of it, of it, which is only this Wednesday, tomorrow as we record this Tuesday night. So in theory, Anyone who was planning to sit down Saturday at the weekend, maybe and do up their CV to apply for this, it was a case of too little, too late. There was a wide range of CVs coming in from all over. I, I did give the example of maybe the the former HJK Helsinki boss um, as as one who had a you know very decorated CV, and as impressive as that was, um, I don't think he was ever a serious contender from the perspective of, I think. And I'm going by the, the the selection this side. I think they were after someone with a bit of League of Ireland experience that sort of knew the league, etc. Um, while Noel King definitely has a CV that you know has League of Ireland on it, it it's twenty years since he managed in this league. I know he's been around women's setups, obviously under twenty one, but like he would have coached the likes of Declan Rice, Jack Grealish, etc. At Irish under twenty one level, but. But very few, say, League of Ireland, and, and certainly very few. I think Daryl Horgan was in a squad with him. I think Andy Boyle got a call up to training when he was the Irish senior interim manager. Um, but it's not like he knows, you know, in depth who who the players are. Like the 
one of the alternatives was obviously Keith Long, who hypothetically Keith Long gets a job. Well, he he knows he this this weekend inside out and who their players are. He knows the dog because he's played against them this season and he's done his homework on them, no doubt. Um, so like, and I would have spoke kind of last week and it, it would have said to you kind of off air, like when I mentioned an exciting plan A and B and just to sort of reference that because I know there has been questions about it. So I, I was aware that, a you know, a, a lucrative offer was put to Stephen Kenny um, that it, as we were recording last week, he hadn't actually said no to as far as I was aware. Um, I always thought it was a long shot, but one I thought was a, you know, a definite runner was potentially Ian Barraclough because he had expressed a desire to speak about the job, but was unwilling to do so until Cheltenham season finished, which is this weekend. Now they have clawed themselves as it stands out of the, the, the bottom tree in, in league one and destiny sort of in their own hands. But he is, is, is his short term deal that he took as assistant there is up on Saturday. So in theory, you could have said, right, win, win or lose, stay up or go down. Go for your few pints Sunday. We'll chat Monday. Make it happen if if that's who you wanted. Um, I I I think the where this sort of went in another way, and and look the way of sort of sounding out. I think James Keddy was a name mentioned. I think they did look at sort of up and coming managers in the first division. Um, you know who was the best option there, perhaps. Uh, and. Again, would have spoke to him, not saying he was ever a serious, like, number one candidate. Uh, Gary Crona was another hoping to get an interview. Just I know Gary was in the showgrounds on Friday night. Um, and all those people, and there's plenty of others that, you know, again, the, the number 70 was mentioned, and I know there was outsiders as well, but they were probably all in, in, a, in the thought process of, like any of us, if I apply for a job and the deadline is next Wednesday, I'm hoping to get a call Thursday, Friday, maybe to say, yeah, you want to come in for a chat. Um, and part of that would be, you know, like in any interview, you'd be sort of expected to outline maybe what you hope to bring to the role or how you expect in the, in this case, how you want to get the most out of these players and how you hope to turn things around. I don't know how much of that took place with the the Noel King thing, but what seemed to be the sort of turning point in all this was, I think they went back to Kenny sort of pressing for an answer because, as I say, he hadn't actually formally rejected it. And I think his general response was that he was still sort of eyeing up other roles, which is, look, is, is his right. Um, Baraclough was obviously slightly on the long finger, but also not. Like, I mean, in theory, one more game under Gartland and Burns would have brought him into the reckoning in terms of like maybe he wouldn't have been the man when they spoke to him, maybe they wouldn't have been able to work it out financially or anything else, but certainly would have been able to have that conversation. Um and it sort of got to I don't know if panic mode is the right way, but it it, it definitely went on a solo run where like Keith, Keith Long's name had always been sort of linked to it. And, and there's again, there's a link there where Keith Long's father-in-law is Pat Devlin, who, again, comes from that sort of stable um, of people that Brian Ainscough would be aware of. And um, they, they did reach out at Thursday night, Friday morning, sort of, you know, to speak to Waterford. And that was obviously rejected. Um, and then all of a sudden, Noel King is the man. And, and it, you know, what, what is sort of, like, they were obviously willing to push the boat out to get Stephen Kenny, which is admirable. And, and, and I know the club is, and this has been acknowledged in a couple of articles, even in the past week, that, as I would have pointed out, that the club's finances are great, but there is, I suppose there's elements to that where you'd say there is investment coming in. And I think it's a far more attractive investment if you've someone like Stephen Kenny at the helm, because he... He lifts everything, you know, in terms of sponsorship and intrigue and all that. A bit like if you had pointed Roy Keane to the Irish job. I know people have their own opinions on Roy Keane as a manager, but you can't deny his sort of box office charisma. Um, and again, had the Keith Long approach been made, there would have been compensation involved. So 
they were willing to sort of spend on this. So I don't think it's a case of because I just because I've seen it mentioned that it's, it's the cheap option uh, or a money saving thing. But this I is what people's like anger slash confusion slash everything is that like we we seem to have a desire to get a good candidate to, um, within the League of Ireland circles. A lot of these guys yeah. that were all mentioned are well regarded, well respected and know their stuff. Um, yeah. This is the confusion. Where, as you said, yeah. that was that panic mode, just boom, right, I'm just going to be rash here, essentially. That's all it was. And it, 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 it's, and... Money where, it's, it's money where your mouth is. To, like, listen, your, and I hope it's not, but your business could be losing money on a weekly basis, but you could also have a million in your bank account, which I don't think you have, but, uh, you know, it doesn't mean your don't know that means part. Maybe, it, maybe, it, maybe it means the, the business is, but, like, it, certainly whatever the source of it, there, there was, uh, you know, a sort of eye watering sum put to to Stephen Kenny, I believe. Again, it would have cost. I I can only speculate. What I won't even speculate, but it would have cost to get Keith Long out of his deal, and then you go to to Noel King. But for me, like I didn't think there was the need to rush this on on multiple yeah. levels because I was in Sligo, right? And look again. Last week's show, look, you're trying to talk it up a little bit. And I know you you said maybe you're drinking from the Kool-Aid, but I did see a lot of positives. I, I do take, like, listen, is it perfect? Absolutely not. But we showed a bit of character. Like, we went 1-0 down. We didn't start well. Taught the, taught the goal, Hartman, a good, a good strike. I thought the keeper should have done better with it. Uh, don't want to be getting too critical. But, like, we fought or we, we ended the first half well. And second half came out, got the penalty, well deserved, you know, stuck it away. And yeah, both teams kind of had, you know, maybe they had the bulk of the chances, but the big chance for me to win it was Jamie Gullins where, you know, he's denied by McGinty. He also had one in the net that was offside. But even at that, like, and I, I, I would have said this to Brian Gartland after the game that, you know, point ordinarily in the showgrounds isn't a bad you know, result. I mean, Derry have gone there this season, only got a point. Rovers have gone there this season, only got a point. Shells are actually still the only team to win there in their top of the league. So, like, in isolation, it's not a bad point. And, you know... That comes back to why are we panicking? So, again, like, yeah, I understand but, the point but, you're but making. This, the lads but, are but doing this is okay. Why, but this is why it, it sort of came as a... So, like, we, we literally would have done the interviews with Brian Gartland after the match... Everything sort of, uh, you know, we'll see what happens next week. And like, he's not even aware of it at this stage that there's a new manager incoming. And it, it, the news sort of broke on, on the bus on the way home or one of the players, you know, would have been, would have seen it on, on social media, like all of us. And uh, that's how the, the team found out. And, 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 and you're right, just for the, the process could have been definitely better. Like, look, I think when you set a deadline, you should honour it unless it's blatantly obvious that someone is by far and away. It, like, if Stephen Kenny had a rang last Friday and said, I mean, by all means, give Stephen Kenny the job. No one cares. But I think when you've set a deadline like that, you know, wait till Wednesday, weigh everything up. And listen, if Noel King's still your number one, then that's okay. He's still your number one. Yeah, yeah. But you're right in what you said. It did sort of undermine the process that had been happening this side of the IRC and, uh, or sorry, Atlantic Ocean or whatever it is between us and America. Um, and it definitely, you know, now that said, and I do have sympathy for the position that maybe the staff in Oriel would have found themselves in, but. Brian Ainsgill, while we mightn't agree with us, he he does have the right to appoint who he wants. Um, and if he feels Noel King is the best for it, but it just seemed a bit rushed because you've literally been rejected earlier that day by Waterford to speak to one manager, and all of a sudden you've appointed another who, again, like I've heard people talk about someone like say Vinnie Pert that is he too long out of it now in that it's a few yeah. years since he managed and like with all due respect when he was, was managing less than three years ago versus um, 
like I know Noel's still been involved in it, but like there's a case there's to be levels, made. And, there's and, levels. There's levels. Yeah, and 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 like at some point we we will have a women's senior team again, hopefully. And he definitely like for that role. And I'm not to diminish the women's side or anything, but for that role, he had the experience. He's literally won leagues and cups in recent years at women's football level. So he knows probably, and I don't know them, but he probably knows the women's team at Bowes better than he knows the men's team. You know, that sort of way. So it, and it's all familiarity. Like I, I was saying to someone uh, during the week that like there was a point in my life, maybe when I was in school or whatever, I, I probably could have named every single uh, squad from one to whatever one up to in the Premier League, and now there's lads you're watching on, and I like like all of us we'd we'd have matches on, but there's definitely players you're unaware of just as you kind of lose interest as you get older and stuff like that. But um, so there is a learning curve to this, but and Brian probably does need to speak on this at some point. I know there was a very short statement in in terms of what the club put out, but. He probably does need to justify it because, like, I, I hope he's deleted his social media at this stage because I can only imagine <laughs> the sort of uh, uh, notifications tab that's awaiting him if and when he looks at it if he hasn't already. So it's and 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 that's a great pity because he he hadn't really put a foot wrong to this point in terms of I think most people had welcomed his. Arrival at the club, he'd he'd done a lot of good things. I'm not saying this is a bad thing necessarily, because look, he could turn around in six months and and be the one laughing at all of us. But definitely in terms of the process, it probably could have been handled better. And um, you know, even for it to uh to come out in the manner it did when 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 your staff don't really even know about it, um, isn't is an ideal like and, and I'm being slightly hypocritical there I realize that because as, as a journalist he breaks stories as yourself but like um yeah like this this happening on a match night yeah but you've also and I know from some of your stuff that like you would have told me the stuff you've held on to in well, a like, sense well like for example like if I wanted if, well. I, if I wanted a sensational headline like you you could have went with you know, the dark make lucrative offer to Stephen Kenny last week. And it would have yeah. been 100% true. I didn't want to do that for a couple of reasons. And and one of that is like, because, and it's probably not the, the best thing from a professional standpoint, but you don't want to put him off a deal either. You know, mm. if that news breaks or you don't want to alert his availability to someone else, because there's, you know, even now there, there's other managers in the league at other clubs that are under a bit of pressure. And why yeah. wouldn't they want Stephen Kenny at, at the helm if, if there's a vacancy? So you, you don't want to do that. And in the same way as, like, I would have been sort of aware pre Stephen O'Donnell's appointment that, that that he was the man that they wanted. But I wasn't going to put that out, like, pre a cup final um, for the sake of a headline because look, there's, there's multiple facets that you have to deal with these people as well. And yeah. Like I know Pat's been on to win that final, but does he hold it against you if they hadn't, or you know all that sort of stuff? So, um, it, there's morals to it, and what, like whether you're right, you're wrong, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, with with different people. But it, yeah, like it, it, it just it, the whole thing probably could have been, well, definitely could have been handled a lot, lot better. And um, but look, <laughs> Noel King, whether you, whether he was your first choice your last choice somewhere in the middle he's the manager now and and there's a, yeah. there's an element of we have to get on with this because look regardless of who's at the helm uh, be it Stephen Kenny Harry Kenny or anyone else called Kenny it's you know it, it's it, we're in a predicament and you know divisiveness isn't going to get us out of that yeah i i, I don't know even kind of I was listening to him with Tony O'Donoghue today and like, again, like he, and, he, and he did his interview with Gav and I listened to both of them and he, he kind of, it reminds me to an extent on a lot lower level, to be fair, of his interview with Tony back in the day when he, he was just, he was like agitated or, you know, in defensive mode. And again, I, I felt he could have even handled some of the interviews a bit better. He's black and white. He's like, I'm here to keep them up. I'm here to do this. I don't know that. I did it the black and white, given nothing. And then a part of me was thinking, because he doesn't know anything. Like he, he, if you, 
you can't turn around and lie and say, well, I've been looking at Dundalk for months and we've been doing like, he was like, I haven't. So fair enough. I kind of get where, again, all the, the comments towards Noel, including myself, like, uh, you know, it's probably harsh. I think I genuinely, I think there's a lot of um, question just again, just towards our owner, because when when we talk about you, you said there was things that, that, that the owner's done and they're putting plans in place and stuff really good things for the club. And I I just feel this, and again, maybe he keeps us up, maybe he doesn't. Maybe Stephen Kenny wouldn't have kept us up anyway. Nobody knows. But what I'm saying is, I feel this is just a potential own goal. I just thought there was no need to do it. Just absolutely no need to do it. And again, as you say, the way it happened, like when it happened, I just think it's a big own goal. If you look at the reaction of people. And again, we all think as fans, sometimes you go, oh, Jesus, maybe we are overdoing it. But when you look at like polls and stuff and people that have done our comments under um, uh, their post when they released it and stuff like that, like it was all like negative of what are we doing and stuff. And, and again, that's based on King's merits, along with the process that they said they were following. But it's also just solely based on King's uh, methods. And we also have to take this back to we are in an absolute dogfight of a relegation uh, battle on our hands. And what experience has he got in that in the last 10, 20 years? And that's a question. No, but, like, I don't know. But, and, 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 but like, who like, has, you know, that's what I, that's what I would say. Like there's, there, to be fair on that. Literally no Ian Barraclough is in the middle of a fucking relegation battle right now. And if he keeps well, yeah. As an assistant, yeah, as an, as an assistant, yeah, but yeah, look, and yeah, maybe, maybe that's a very relevant point, but uh, certainly within Ireland, uh, mm. like I think there's no, you know, there's no big Sam sort of figure that, you know, you go to, to get this, you know, to get you out of that, that hole or whatever. Um, and yeah, look, it's definitely left field. Like, I don't want to be, you know, dismissive of Noel because he has, you know, I think if any of us had a a brother or a mate, a, you know, a son, whatever, that went on to achieve what he did in terms of managing under-21 level for Ireland and managing the senior women's national team, it's a decent CV, to be fair. Yeah, but now, it's, this, is, this is not personal to Noel King. This is us as club fans looking at the guy that has come in to our job. You said about like Shelburne's ladies, which is part time, which, you know, a quote of his was saying that it was too busy. That's 21 to 23. His last job before that. Was to, to, to be fair, to be fair. And that's just just on that, because he, he was asked about that and, and the, the, the how he referenced it was. He said that was a part time gig that was effectively a full time job. Um. So you're trying to do, you're trying to run a club like a full time setup, but it's in the evening and stuff like that. So I'm not defending the man, but like he he does deserve that sort of right because I've seen not just you reference it, a few people have referenced it. So that that was his response to it. I'm not taking sides on it. That was his response. Okay, to, that's that grand. He so that... he he's he was his issue with the Shelburne job, uh, is explained to you. Fair enough. His job before that was 2013 as an interim manager with our senior men with, for two games against Kazakhstan and Germany. Previous to that, yes, he was the Ireland under-21s manager uh, from 2010 to 18 with a poor enough record. Then he was the 2000, 2000 to 2010 was the ladies manager. Again, a poor record. Um, Finn Harps' last job in 2003, we'll say in, I assume it was full-time football management at least. Um, and like, Man, that's 20 years ago. So, like, it's it's not personal with him, but it's just, if if you take off, we're getting your anger towards Brian Ainscoff, towards uh, even Noel King himself now, but if you're a fan looking at this, like, I'm thinking there's absolutely no merit on him to prove to me that he'll actually get us out of this relegation battle. Not that he even deserves the job, but I'm thinking, okay, Grant, you've got the job. But now I'm going to look through a few things and think, well, what what here shows me that you're in a place to galvanize our group together and get us out of relegation? And looking at that and looking at the gaps between things and the success rates and win, like also, so where are we now? From 2000 to 2013, 
is uh, is Republic of Ireland women's men's 21s and two matches of men's interim. They're all international football as well, man. You know, which is two games every four or five months. And then Shelburne's women, which train in three times a week in a match, as you said, uh, fair enough, it was a part-time gig, but it felt full-time. So, like, he has not been in a position that he's been full-time managing a club since 2003. And even at that, Finn Harps and 2003 he probably weren't full-time. So there's just nothing that says to me in my head right now that this is the right man to take us out of trouble. And I don't care why he was appointed his mate or anything like it. It's not personal. But I look at that managerial career and I think in the position that we're in for our club, that is not a CV that I see that is going to take us out. Unless, and we're going to move into questions, it is a case of he's there for his pro license and they are going to let uh, Garth and Burnsy continue as you've seen the last two games, maybe that good work. Then that's okay. I'd go, eh, fair enough. We've done this kind of stuff before. And maybe he does have a, an older head on him so he could help in certain ways in that sense. But if he's the guy calling the shots, training every day, I, I, I don't know. And I can't I can't accept that he was with Home Farm Ladies last year. There's, there's, there's managers of Glenmuir, Rock Celtic here and all. That's the same level as, as that. You know, they're not getting the Dundalk job. And I, I just find it wild. The, the process was a disgrace, but also the actual appointment, when you look at the CV and think, can you get us out of this bother? I don't think he can. And that's where I think our bother's going to come. But is it that mad that it could work? And listen, I, I, I'm with you. It's a, it's a, it's a hundred percent a gamble. It, but a lot of, a lot of appointments would have been. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with 95% of what you said there, but so, like, the owner, rightly or wrongly, who again has a background in football and coaching and stuff, has sort of anointed this guy. He's 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 crowned the king for want of a better term, and like, maybe he is the last laugh. And again, maybe. what is success? Do you take? Do you take right, regardless of who's in the dugout? Do you take ninth place right now and roll the dice in a playoff? You probably do. Hmm. Um, not ideal. You'd obviously prefer eight or seventh or sixth or whatever as high as you can go. But like where we are right now, struggling for goals and and all that. If he keeps us up, he's a great lad. But what shows you that this is the fucking man with the right TV? That's oh, yeah, listen, he wouldn't have been my pick. He wouldn't have been yeah. on my shortlist. But and like like I said at the start, if there was a, if there was a, a, a bookies odds. I don't think he would have made the, you know, the way there's always like probably Jerry Malone, 250 to one and stuff like that. You know, yeah. it, it wouldn't even have been in that category. Um, like, you know, I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but like when the, when the, the job came up in, in recent sort of times, you do look back at the sort of pro license sort of, um, list you know year by year that be different people have graduated and and he was part of that original group in 09 who graduated with the pro license and you, you're looking at like all that group with all due respect and and i don't think any of them bar maybe john gill uh, very recently up north i don't think any of them are really involved in terms of coaching day to day yeah you know the likes of noel o'reilly was on that and the man's deceased uh, like it, it it's and and listen, I'm not not trying to be ageist about it, but rightly or wrongly, the, 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 it's kind of gone. Where, like, I think John Caulfield's fifty nine, um, or there thereabouts. Keith Long's just gone fifty, but outside that, it's a very young managerial pool in this country. And you know the the names that I suppose twenty years ago that were around, like the the Dolans, the Keelys, the. The, the Roddy Collins, the you know, the Damian Richardson, they're, they're just not on the scene anymore. Um, but like, I, I completely agree. I, I don't, and nobody's ageist. I think, listen, whether we be happy or not, I don't know. But like, like Liam Buckley, sixty three. Really, if he came in, people might would be still giving out probably. Well, what I'd say, what I'd say, he's been in work. He's been in dealing yeah, with so, so, stuff. so yeah. So Liam's been actively involved in the League of Ireland. So like, including as recently as last season. So. Liam wouldn't have been personally my pick, no disrespect, but uh, not that I get to pick it, but um, but at least he's aware of the of the league of the you know the pool of players. 
um, you know, we, we may as well, like, because I know there was like CVs from Brazil and everything, apparently, um, <laughs> you know, we may as well have went with someone like that because they probably have as much knowledge of the overall. But look, management is that sort of thing where you go in, like we were discussing Stephen Kenny here. Like, uh, it's no secret one of Stephen's ambitions is to maybe manage abroad. How well does he know, say, League One, League Two, Scottish Championship or wherever he ends up? Um, so there's an element of you have to learn on your feet. Not everything's going to be ideal. There's probably no Kenny aside, and that's probably romantic as much as anything. There, there was no obvious, like, outstanding candidate. And I'm not, listen, I'm not still not saying I would have appointed Noel King, but I, I, I we're probably going round in circles on it. I, 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 I do agree that, like, the process could have been a little better. The deadline, a deadline was set rightly or wrongly, at least adhere to it, you know, unless someone truly outstanding comes along. And with all due respect to Noel, I don't think he fits that bill. And then weigh it up. And listen, if you want to put Noel on the list, then then do so. But mm -hmm. it does have an element of jobs for the boys about it. I'm not saying it is, but that's what some people will read it as. And that's been a criticism of Oriel Park for a long, long many years. Mm. And um under a new owner we thought that might change. Um but here we are. Um but for what it's worth, Brian Inscope didn't do anything wrong in the sense of it could it have been handled better? Yes. But he has full authority to appoint who he sees fit. He obviously has people around him that are entitled to an opinion and and able to advise him, etc. But ultimately, the final call is his. And 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 if this backfires, he picks up the the sort of the crap from it because, like, I don't think anyone wants to see us in the first division and. Equally, <laughs> if Noel King gets us out of trouble, he's a great fella. Um, we do have a few questions in um, from listeners. And again, that's always uh, in association with Malone Financial Insurances. Um, or services, even, sorry. So there's a few that are asking general questions that we've kind of already gone through. Um, there's somebody sent me in, and this is a bit of an essay, so for people, they can... Uh, Bear with me for two minutes. But again, it, it this does, does give honest reflection of fans and stuff um, of how they feel. So I suppose, and maybe we've gone through all this and we all feel the, the same way. Maybe, as you said, maybe we are right now at this stage going around in circles and we just have to see what happens. But anyway, uh, we all hear of a fair and clear process of how recruitment is done when it comes to managing appointments of football. In one swift decision, the owners made a fatal error in terms of trust and working relationships with both supporters and staff at the club. Our CEO, in good faith, along with our head of football operations, conducted what was a search for a manager that would suit the needs and ambitions of this club. Having a club owner undermine both of these people on Friday night in order to hire someone who neither expressed an interest nor was asked to interview for the job shows the indifference that our owner has towards employees and what he thinks of the club overall. Uh, one news out outlet described the reaction as mixed on Saturday. I glanced at some of the 111 comments underneath the Dundalk announcement of Noel King, and only two were positive. So that's not mixed. Um, he was asked to reconsider on the basis of a reaction and still went ahead. We've seen the damage the action of Sol or Rowan can do in a football club, and Brian must realise that he's dealing with a fan base that care deeply and will turn their back on him for the sake of this club. People in the club must feel completely undermined and devalued on account of all of this and will question their position and, more importantly, their reputation on account of all of this. Um, and I suppose then the first question from Stephen Cooney that says, Peter Halpin and Brian Gartland look to have been undermined with the decision. Where do they go from here? And I just think it's a fair shout of all the things we were talking about. I think the process and that that's big in a, in a, in a business commercial world. That's you know, your job. Again, I haven't spoke to Peter or Brian, so I don't know if they feel undermined or anything like that. But from what it looks like, if that is the case, it doesn't sit well. I think there can be a bit of aggro in there. And maybe the lads get on with it because that's their job. But I think if that was me and I was undermined, I'd be a bit annoyed. So 
I, I, well, that well, that's our, that like listen. Without being cruel about it, that's their choice now. They've they've, they've two options: either sort of walk or yeah, enough, yeah. get on with it. Now, they, 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 listen, and I I don't know because I, I I don't know if they have or they haven't or if they intend to. But like in their own time, if they, if they feel let down by the owner, they can raise that concern with them and hope it doesn't happen again or whatever. Uh, if that's how they feel, I don't know. But they they basically have two options: either leave which may not be an option depending on listen how uh, how many of, of us walk out of jobs in in our day-to-day -day life um exactly yeah yeah you know and or or to get in behind it and row in behind it and um that's all they can do now like, as i say like there's an element of i get the the anger and the outrage or whatever but like come friday night what are you gonna do not go to oriel you're gonna not support the team. Hope to lose. Yeah. You, you, like, I don't think anybody is on that path. I think everybody else seems to be no. More but I think I, with I, the I, process. Yeah, and and but but ultimately, it's one of those where and like we'd regularly say on the podcast. I hope I'm wrong about this or whatever. I hope we're all wrong. I, like, you know what? Let's hope we're all in the Lily White Lounge, whatever. Come, I know the season ends in November, but let's let's say October and we're safe. And Brian Innes goes there. Well, rather than him putting the points on, maybe we need to be buying him a pint, and that'd be a great scenario, you know. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, and and listen, maybe that's wishful thinking, but there, a few weeks from now, I I, I think the danger of disappointment is, um, you know. I'm around long enough, and it's 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 coming up on twenty years. Uh, May oh four, Jim Gannon came in and lost his first game six 0 against Bray, and Jeez. that 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 was coming off the back of the Trevor Anderson uh, glory days and a, a, a sort of bleak stage for the club. I I think if you had have appointed, and I'm just going to pick him randomly, Gary Cronin to the role this week. And Gary Cronin lost three 0 say to Bowes on Friday night. I don't think there was anyone saying he's out of his depth or he's the wrong appointment or yeah. and that's it's a disgrace difference. or anything. Whereas, with all due respect, and 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 no, if we are beating three 0 on Friday, and I hope we're not by Bowes, there is that sort of commentary straight away. There's that like straight away. There's that pressure on him, and um, that I think another appointment wouldn't have had that sort of scrutiny. And that, for what it's worth, I was going through it today. Who would you say is our last permanent manager to win their first league game in charge? Permanent. Foster. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he, he won away. Who's the last to win the first permanent permanent job? Uh, to win their first game at Oriel. It could be, I could be fucking Darren McKeeley for all I know. It could be oh, anyone. John, like, yeah. John Hewitt in 96. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah. so, so what, and, and by the way, that turned out to be a <laughs> hellishing sort of uh, experience. So, <laughs> but it's, um, it, it, my point being, it's, it's not a club for even, the Kennys, the Perts who won titles and all that, who um were not a club who generally a manager gets off to a great start. But it's and we're already in that sort like listen, you could appoint Pep Guardiola, it doesn't make, you know, us a free scoring side in the morning, probably. Um we have struggled for goals, we continue to struggle for even uh, as good as we were at in at, at times in Sligo, it still was a a set piece goal like a penalty that that got us the goal. Um, now it definitely signs improving. I don't want to take away from that, but it's going to be difficult. Bows are in a bit of form, etc. And my fear is that a bad result, whatever that is, you don't get that sort of honeymoon period that maybe another manager would get, and that's the sort of danger of this. But just to touch on it, because I know um you referenced it earlier, and I know Richie Garland, there was probably others, but the the the, the reference was King just there for his pro license for Gartland and Burns to still be in charge. 
no, that's not the case at all. For well, for a start, you could there was no rush to do that if if it was the case because Gartland and Borden's were fine for sixty days. Um, we we'd be nowhere near that. Um, equally, you wouldn't have had to appoint him full time. You could have come in in an interim role. Um, it is an eighteen month deal. Uh, and also to be fair to the two lads, and I, I definitely asked Brian. I didn't get speaking to Lean, but I get the feeling neither of them wanted to sort of go into the management in a full time capacity. Now they'll obviously still be still around Oriel and still part of the process, and particularly this week, they'll be probably very hands on because there's an element of handover to it all. Um, which probably would have been the case no matter who took the job, but um, I I don't think it's like what we've done in the past where you have someone there and, and again for what it's worth Dave Mackey who sort of filled that position in the past is around the club so you didn't have to go to Noel King to do that and also it flies in the face of you know you're, one minute you're offering it to Keith Long like Keith Long wouldn't have been there just to accommodate Garth and the Burns would he you know so yeah, true. Um, I suppose uh, just as a last one, even we can move on because obviously we bows now on Friday. But uh, Colin Mullen asked, kind of, just so it's not all Noel Quinn questions. Any word on Robbie Mann's injury? So there, there's obviously a few lads kind of even touch and go in regards for the bows game. So uh, uh, with the likes of Mann, has, has there been any word, or is there anybody else going to be coming back? Like, well, well, uh. I'll say, well, no, it's weird saying that. Will, will Noel King have a uh, a full squad to pick from, or is there any kind of <laughs> actually? I seen was I don't know if it was you or somebody else. Like, did Cammy get injured like in the last minute of a training game or something the other day? Yeah, like, mother. Yeah. Of the, God. <laughs> the, the, I think it was the Sunday before the original Bows game on the Monday night. Uh, so <laughs> I think they're hoping to have him back. I did ask Brian for a bit of an injury update just at the end because it it kind of got lost in the weeds just with so much going on with managerial turnover, et cetera, in recent weeks of like kind of where people are at. They, they still didn't know really on Robbie's, Robbie Mahan's injury because it, it was still quite swollen from the, it, it was only four days prior, obviously, the, the, the Bose game. And they decided, I think that day, I think he said, to send him for a scan. So I didn't hear anything in between. So, still sort of awaiting the outcome of that they're kind of hopeful it's not too serious but the fact they're getting it scanned you never know um i think kieran mcguckin's still struggling with an injury he got on uh international duty you know again another forward option and obviously mayoa uh came off he was sort of feeling something in the early stage of the game so again a couple of couple of injury doubts there jamie walker was doing some running beforehand as well so um, I'd imagine he's not too far away and and, and just on the sort of injury thing because I don't want to completely gloss over Sligo but I thought like Dara Keane who's someone who has really struggled with it with that groin problem um, he made a difference coming in on Friday night you know so I, I think whether he's ready to start a game or not he hasn't he, he's come on I think in the last four off the bench he hasn't started yet but you know he certainly got stuck in and even our big chance to to win it, as I say, it was him nipping at Conor Malley to, to set Gullen on his way. So he added a little bite in there that, you know, we might need. And again, a lad who's had, you know, I spoke to him afterwards. He said uh, back-to-back relegation battles with UCD. So he knows what it's like to be down there scrapping. So that sort of experience is invaluable. I suppose, you, you know, you were at the game on... Uh... On Friday, and we were definitely not an hour into the podcast going to review it. But you know, with Bows coming up, I know they've beaten ourselves, Strada and Shells in their last three. So kind of that Reynolds factor has definitely uh, sparked something. I, it's going to say, what what can you expect? And I suppose with the new manager and with their run, it, you know, who knows? You know, it, it could be four all, it could be nil all, it could be two nil to them, two nil to us because we get the new manager bounce. You just don't know, I suppose, really. But uh, I suppose looking into it, it'd be like there was only going to be so long we can go really without a win, at least, because you know teams are just starting to. I know you were saying earlier, but taking ninth, essentially ninth is probably the. I think thirteen points is the next one, and that's four or five wins to get up there, really. You know, without them doing that and stuff. So, yeah, 
Well, like even that. like I made the point on, and this is where the, the I think the Sligo result sort of got over overlooked. Like I think every result we have now that isn't a win, it it's sort yeah. of a negative in a weird way because you're just waiting for that first win, and I get that. But like I say, ordinarily that point in Sligo isn't a bad result, and with Drogheda losing the other night, like the gap to them is back to three, so it's not insurmountable by any means we have them uh three games from now and in, obviously we could win they could win in between you don't know but like if if both teams take the same number of points in between we go to weavers park on bank holiday monday with a chance of you know moving level on points with them. so it's it's far from you know out of reach or anything um but Look, we'll see. Like the, the one thing I'll say about the Bows game is I wasn't overly impressed with them when we played them in Daily Mount literally what eight days ago as we're recording this and a, a sort of momentary lapse gave them the win. I think even their incredibly biased commentary team said we probably were worthy for a, of a point. And you'd like to think coming to Oriel maybe just gives us that sort of um you know the home like a, a, as bleak as this season and we haven't even scored in Oriel yet this year but the last three matches in Oriel have been nil nil so it's it's at least become a bit of a hard place to go again in a way. Now it is until it isn't but I mean <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't be just be I think their 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 position in the in the table uh, I wouldn't be overly fearful of that in any way. Like as I say, we 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 went toe to, and the players will notice they went toe to toe with them. As I say, literally eight days ago, as I'm talking, and the it wasn't like there were levels above us, and that was at their patch. So now they have to come to our patch and do it. So look, they got the sort of they took the big chance that night. Please God, we take the big one if it comes on Friday. Right, so before we kind of wrap up and go through even some of the underage stuff, we will hear from our sponsors, The Unit. Today's episode is powered by The Unit, experts in building innovative products for the betting, iGaming and sports industries. They're the brains behind building innovative products tailored for those who love the game as much as we do. From software that powers up the betting world to platforms that enhance how we engage with our favourite sports, The Unit is leading the charge. The Unit, a winning team that reminds me of the Kenny Era Dundalk and their consistency and results. Proud sponsors of the Press Box Podcast. Learn more at theunit.dev. A last thing, uh, I know you wanted to reference Eamon Carroll um, and also our, our kit man, Noel Walsh, uh, going in for our hip surgery, so we do wish him the best for that. But... Uh, I know you've a topic down about the PFAI survey. Uh, sadly, Dundalk having the worst overall ground and pitch. I think this is actually a topic that we can have for actually a conversation for maybe another pod, as in whether it's next week. Um, <laughs> we are being something else to talk about, um, and maybe get somebody in from the PFAI and maybe go through a few things. But it's it's another it's another kick in the teeth, I suppose, for Dundalk. Um, but me seeing that. I'm not in any way shocked. And I think to be fair to the ownership now, they are going to start addressing things like that. It's not, this isn't their fault as of now, but it is still, you know, it's a kick in the teeth to see, oh, Jesus, we are kind of down the bottom in that sense. Like. Yeah, look, it probably doesn't overly surprise you. I think the dog got worst overall ground and pitch. I think Drogheda got worst dressing rooms in the Premier Division. So, uh, look, the, the one thing for me and, and Stephen McGuinness in his press comments on the matter said he hoped it became a government issue and a wake-up call. There's local elections taking place. There's probably not that far away from being general elections taking place. And it it should be an issue because as as a I know we don't drum together enough as a county in, in many respects, but Loud is the worst sporting facilities in terms of football in the country, you know, based on that. And you know, to to flip that no shock, I suppose, but the best facilities rated by players, um, and this was a survey of players, was Tala, which is completely 
local authority driven. Um, and at some point, you need to say this needs to change, like, and it needs support. And I don't know, it just hasn't been a priority for, for long enough. Um, look, we could talk about this all night, but uh, that's the one thing I would say that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's no, the findings for me anyway were no shock. Mm. Um, but when do you start saying that's not cool anymore? And I know, look, new ownership and there's bigger things to, to come but even like talking to Noel on Monday like I, we, we were in the YDC and he was saying it was a great building etc but the actual ground and like the changing room he's going to be giving us team talk in on Friday nights it's like it's the same that he was in in, in the late 70s and early 80s and his two stints at the club as players like it's it, it the ground hasn't changed in that regard and if anything it's got a little worse because you know the, the pitch that sort of Mickey Fox would have had back in the days was actually a, you know a fine surface and now you're rated as worse surface so um it, it it's 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 not good it's not good enough um look we know that but uh, i did think that the one thing to take away from it was look the pfei were saying this needs to become a government issue and just bear in mind that people will be knocking on your doors in the coming weeks and months with with elections on the horizon and then you were, uh, again, I know you were saying about Noel in the hip, I don't know much, and then Eamon as well. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to wish Noel all the best. Noel Walsh, obviously our long-serving kit man, he's gone into, uh, he's got into Santry on Wednesday. Um, this will be out on Wednesday, but he's gone in for, I don't know if he listens or not, but uh, gone in for a hip, hip, hip replacement. So I think he's out till about July. I don't know who's going to fulfil the role in, in, in his absence, but... Again, one of those sort of evergreen characters around Ori has been there since the Sean McCaffrey days and, and a great character and all that. I know he's liked and loved by the players and all that. So um, he'd be a big loss around the place. Uh, and then I just wanted to give me respects to Eamon Carroll, a massive Dundalk fan who's been, again, been laid to rest uh, this Wednesday, but a, a sort of lifelong supporter and uh, another who'll be sadly missed around Oriel Park. But before we go, I will let you take the underage update. And again, as always, that's an association with Jerry McNamee Consultants. Yeah. Um. So the men's under twenties had a one-all draw at home to Derry City on Saturday, with Conor O'Gorman equalising early in the second half to cancel out Oshin Duffy's eleven-minute opener. Prior to that, the men's under fifteens had a four-two win over Finn Harps at Oriel with Shea Savage. TJ Malloy, Murray, Jordan Vachella and Porrick Maguire on target. Meanwhile, on Sunday, the men's under-14s went down 3-1 away to Bowes with Adam Sivkovic getting the consolation for the Lillywhites. Uh, this Saturday, the men's under-20s host Strahada in Oriel Park at 12. That will be followed by the women's under-17s who are in action at home to Finn Harps at half three. The women's under-19s are also at home on Sunday against Finn Harps at one, while the men's under-17s face Bowes away at two. And just uh, well done to the aforementioned TJ Malloy uh, and uh, Black Rock man Sean Spate, who have been named in the Republic of Ireland men's under-15 squad for this week's Torneo della Nazioni competition in Italy. Uh, the young boys in green take on the UAE on Thursday, followed by North Macedonia on Saturday, uh, with results then determining how far to go after that. I'm in an awful way here about the sneeze. This is a disaster. I was like, could you not just go on <laughs> another second? Uh, well, we will definitely leave it there this week uh, from the press box. Thanks again to our main sponsors, the unit, as well as our associate sponsors, Player Fit, Jerry McNamee Consultants, and Malone Financial Services. And as always, we do uh, put this out on YouTube each week now as well. And thanks again to Jason and Mullins on the Castleton Road for sponsoring that. So if you can give that a uh, like and subscribe as well, we'd appreciate it. So, Anyway, the King's Coronation takes place this Friday. Let's hope he starts with a win. See you then. Look out the stars tonight.